how y'all doing today? My name is Bernie Thompson and today we're here to take a look at a 2013 Chevrolet Camaro. We're here to look at the radio. The radio is intermittently cutting in and out. So the first thing I want to do is take a scan tool and I want to scan the radio and see what DTCs are in the radio. So let's go ahead and get that scan tool connected. So now I want to go ahead and I want to get into the radio. I want to get the trouble codes. So we have a code for an antenna and we have a code for the low speed CAN bus failure. So these are my codes. So the antenna I don't think is going to give me any kind of a problem with the radio cutting out, but definitely the CAN bus will have a problem. Now on these systems, the radio sends out an enable to the control head. When it sees the key go in, it will wake up the control head with an enable signal. Now if the enable signal does not come up, you'll set CAN codes. So this could be either be a control head problem or a radio problem, and a scan tool is not going to help me with this. I'm going to need an oscilloscope. So I'm going to take my scope and I'm going to get the radio out and we're going to back probe into the power ground and the signals of the control head so we can figure out where my problem is with this vehicle. So now I've removed the control head for the radio and I've got the wiring accessed and I got a wiring diagram. So I found the ground, the power, the can high, can low, and I found an enable wire. Now the enable wire on these systems works differently. When it's high, the can is off. When that enable wire drops, the can starts to talk. And that enable wire is controlled from the radio. So the radio, when it sees your key go in, it wakes up the control head so you can control your HVAC functions and your radio. So basically we've gone ahead and we've back probed this system. The blue lead is on the power, the white lead is on the ground, the red lead is can high, the yellow is can low, and the green lead is the enable. So what we're going to do now is we're going to get this data up on the scope so we can figure out what's going wrong with this radio and why it's cutting on and off. Now that we've connected the oscilloscope to the radio control head, we want to go ahead and make sure our connections are made. I want to go to meter, and we have five leads connected, so all of them are connected. So the next thing we want to do is come and get some data. So now we want to go ahead and we're going to put the key in. Here we've got it started to work. When the enable went down, it worked. Now. The enable is trying to wake it back up. Do you see how the enable is dropping and the bus is dropping? Well, when it, what should happen is the enable should come down and we should start having a CAN message right here. And that's not what's happening. Now this is trying to wake the bus up with the enable. Here we go. It started to work. The radio is working. I have control of the radio. So this has a problem with the control head. We have power and we have grounds. The white is the ground, the blue is the power. We did not lose those during that failure. Now that we have CAN and we're, we're communicating, the radio is working. So what we're going to do is we're just going to watch this for a second and this radio supposedly comes on and goes off. So let's see if it does do that. Here we had it fail right here and we had some ground failure going on before that occurred. So now we can't control the radio. We've lost the radio. So let's shut it off and let the can drop again and go back to sleep. So that went to sleep. Let's see if we can get it to wake up again. Okay, so the enable dropped, but it didn't start to communicate. Here it's working. But our radio is still down. Now the radio is up. 
and we're functioning. We're just going to watch the power in the ground and the signal, and we're going to see if the signal will start to break down. Okay, so here's our capture. So now we need to look at this data. We're going to get the zoom window, and it's what I see here is my white leads connected to the ground, and I have something going on before it failed over here. These are really short spikes that are coming in here, but something's happening there. And we can see where this pulled down right here, but the enable was left on. This, the bus just failed right here, and then it came back on. But during this bus failure, do you see how we have something on the ground and then we're clean over here? This has something to do with the radio communications between the two. My power is okay, but my ground has something going on. Um, whether that's the problem or not, that really isn't an elevated ground. These are like spikes that are occurring. And we can see a lot of them down here actually. And the, some of them just get bigger right before we have a radio failure here. So one thing I want to try is I want to go and I want to get cursors. I want to put that one there. I'm just trying to see if these spikes might be coming from the ignition, if they align with, with it or not. Um, let's move our cursor over just one, try that again. So these aren't related to the ignition. We can see that they're at a little bit different time than the ignition is. So those aren't ignition things happening here. But they definitely got bigger right before we had our failure. And we can see how close together these are. And again, we checked that, and I don't think that's the ignition, so we'll go back out. We can see some type of a failure, but the thing that the bus flat fails here, and the enable was left on. So the enable is being sent from the radio, so it wakes up the control head. This is the control head failing right here. So I had power, and the ground did something, and then we are good over here, and I don't see any of those spikes in the ground. So now is what I want to do is I want to get into that ground, and I want to run an external ground to it, and I want to see if we still have the problem once we do that. So let's go ahead and, and do that. Okay, so I've bridged a ground from the battery to the ground wire at the connector for the control head. Okay, now we've bridged the ground from the control head to the battery. What I want to do now is we want to go ahead and we want to start the data, and we want to turn the key, and okay, we can see that we had the can come up. Now the enable is not dropping. Now that enable really should have dropped right away. Now we're up and we're working. So now we want to just give it a chance to fail. So we're going to just monitor the screen and we're going to get it to fail again and then we're going to see if the ground um, breaks down still or maybe that fixes it but let's see what happens. This will give us a better indication of what's wrong with the vehicle for sure. Chip repairs, tune-ups, brakes and suspension at select location. 4165 right now. Now we still have these spikes coming up. Please leave your name and phone But we've got a good ground, so that isn't what's causing the problem. We just had the radio fail again. 
Okay, so we're going to take our zoom window and we can see right over here, we have a good power and we can see where this guy fails. So we can definitely see that we have our CAN communication happening. We have these little spikes, but we know we have a good ground. So this is very fast noise that's occurring as this unit is failing. Now, the enable stayed at low, which tells it it wants this to continue, but this starts to fail and then it gets pulled to ground and it comes up. And then is what's going to happen is we come back up and we start to have CAN messaging again. Now the radio, when this happens, this changes the station or the input. I also have a problem with the HVAC fan system when this happens. Now this is telling me that the radio head is what's wrong, the control for the radio. The radio is telling it to stay on. It wants to stay in communication, but the head, the transceiver and the radio control is breaking down and causing this problem. So since we have a good power and ground and the bus is failing like this, this is an indication that the radio control head is going to need to be replaced. Now that we can see what's really happening, because we have a scope connected in between the radio and the control head, and I can see the radio control head is the failure, I know what component to replace. So the shop will get the radio control head, they'll get it in here, the car will be ready to return to the customer. The point here is, you will not see this with a scan tool. A scan tool is a great tool to get some real basic data, to get codes, to look through a few things, but it's not going to do in-depth troubleshooting for you. You guys are going to have to start to use scopes if you want to do accurate diagnostics and you want to actually see what's failing and replace the right component. These modern cars have gotten really complicated and components have gotten really expensive. To shotgun these new cars, it's going to cost you a lot of money and you're going to lose a lot of customers. You really need to start to use scopes to diagnose these modern cars with. You know, if you use a scope and you use a logical, test-driven approach, you too will have good troubleshooting in your base.